Welcome to Gateway Youth. Don't we just love technology when it works? Anyway, I am so glad that you have all found us here on YouTube tonight. Look, first of all, I'm going to start by saying a massive shout out to our tech guys, Lockie and Samuel. Oh my goodness, they have been running around crazy trying to get us online and they have just done a fantastic job because now we get to connect. And uh, just so you know, my name's Donna. I am the youth pastor at our Ormo campus uh, and it is so great to be able to combine with all of our campuses uh, tonight and get the joy uh, to talk to all of you. Uh, here at Gateway we believe that we want to create a space where you belong and uh, so everyone tuning in tonight you belong here part of our Gateway youth family so it's so great to have you tonight we've got some fun coming up we've got some worship and we've got an incredible message for you. Now, guys, I am not sure what is happening on, or really, let's be honest, how YouTube works. So I'm pretty sure that you guys still can comment. So you can interact, comment, tell us uh, where you're from. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, tonight we're going to jump straight into some fun with uh, Max and Olivia in uh, Max's masterpiece, where Max takes Olivia's a thousand words and turns it into a picture. Alrighty, so Olivia, a little bit like me, has a a few favorite words so tonight if you hear her say the word um or like why don't you give us a thumbs up in the comments uh, and we're going to count all those up and see how many times she says it but we're doing it out of love guys remember that so why don't you give it up uh, for Max's Masterpieces um, hello welcome to Max's Masterpieces Nice. <laughs> Shout out to Hannah for this brilliant little uh, animation. Um, we have a guest here named Olivia, uh, and she's going to tell a story, and I'm going to attempt to illustrate it. Um, Olivia, tell us about yourself. Okay, so I'm from our Ormo campus, guys. Shout out. If you are from our Ormo, Ormo campus, give us some love and comments. Um, and yeah, so basically, I'm going to tell you a story today. Um, and. Max is going to try and illustrate that, um, so this should be fun. Uh, like Donna said, I do say like and um a lot, so um, yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, Alright, so to start this story off, some context. Uh, growing up, I was a dancer, so I've been a dancer since I was six years old. What, what kind of dancing is that? Um, kind of everything. Uh, but we're going to talk about. I don't know about... how to draw that. <laughs> yeah, draw, draw everything. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So today we're going to talk about, I guess, ballet. Kind of my ballet teacher. We're not. The story's not about ballet, but yeah, it involves my ballet teacher. Um, and basically, growing up, my ballet teacher hated anything that could potentially injure us. Mm. I mean, despite the fact that dance has been the single most thing to injure me, but um, yeah, that's the tea on that. Um, basically, she hated everything, so ice skating was banned, uh, roller skating, nah, don't do that. Um, school sports, we actually kind of weren't allowed to do. She used to encourage us to um, like fake being injured so that we didn't have to participate. Uh, I definitely didn't do that, not because I had integrity or anything. I was actually kind of a very misbehaved child, but I did like sport. Um, <laughs> and I definitely did not have very much regard for my personal safety, which I guess we'll kind of find out in the story. <laughs> um, so one of the, like, I guess my teacher's least favorite activity that anyone could possibly do, she hated this with a passion, was trampolines. Trampolines. <laughs> yes, trampolines. So if you owned a trampoline, she most likely did not like you. Um, <laughs> so this brings us to four days before my end of year dance concert. So if there was ever a time to jump on a trampoline, it was definitely in that moment. Um, so my siblings and I used to jump on our trampoline all the time. We uh, would actually jump from our roof uh, onto our trampoline and do tricks. I don't know how I didn't die. Sometimes we jumped off our roof onto the ground for no reason because parkour. Um, and I didn't die doing that either. So yeah, this day though, we were jumping on the trampoline. I was jumping on the trampoline with my older brother and we, um, after we finished that game where it's like crack the egg, 
um, where your siblings bully you into thinking you are actually going to die. Yeah, that game. Uh, so I didn't injure myself during that game, but we were just jumping normally and my brother decides uh, to double bounce me and I come down and my ankle, she went like, <laughs> like snapped, cracked, like bleh. <laughs> and I screamed naturally because our whole suburb needed to know that I hurt myself and that my brother was responsible. Uh, and so my mum comes out and uh, I was like, he tried to murder me. Um, and she's like, dude, you're overreacting. Um, and <laughs> then she leaves to go to a Bible study um, and a prayer meeting. Um, best believe she was not praying for my ankle. Um, but yeah, anyway, she leaves, I'm crying. I am just thinking about running away from home because she doesn't love me anymore, but I can't actually run because my ankle is whack. Um, and she finally gets home later that night and I'm rolling around on our office chair and I meet her at the garage door and she's like, sis, get up. She didn't say sis, she's not that cool. Um, and she's like, get up. And I'm like, dude, I can't. And she looks down at my ankle and it's actually the size of a balloon. Like, I don't know what a golf ball looks like on the outside of an ankle, but like maybe picture that. Um, and so she freaks out and <laughs> rushes me to the hospital. And we're waiting in the emergency room for like 57 years, as you do. Uh, and we finally get in <laughs> and I have that green whistle thing uh, that they give you to like stop the pain or whatever. So I am zoned out <laughs> completely. Like I'm, I'm just chilling there and the doctor is examining my foot. I'm just lying down on the examination table. And then he uh, he's twisting around my ankle. He's like hitting it. He's like, does this hurt? And I'm like, no. He's like, does this hurt? I'm like, no. He's like, does this hurt? He's like, <laughs> Surely it should have hurt. Or is the green whistle just that potent? Like, oh, we'll find out. <laughs> um, and so he's literally just hitting this, doing all the things you do to find out whether an ankle is me like messed up. <laughs> and so finally, uh, he's like to my mum, uh, I don't actually think it's broken. Like, I don't think she'll need a cast. I think she'll be sweet for that concert, maybe even. Like, just give it some rest. Uh, yeah, I, in my eight-year-old wisdom and green whistle a fied self <laughs> turn around and I'm like sis it's the wrong foot <laughs> so like I don't know if he just had a long shift uh, and he couldn't tell the difference between like a watermelon on my ankle and like a normal ankle um, but yeah that's that's what happened and it was great I did get a cast because it was actually broken and I didn't do my end of year concert pretty sure my ballet teacher didn't like me very much after that uh, and my brothers didn't like me very much after that either because they had to do everything for me for the entire school holidays um, yeah so <laughs> that's that's the story <laughs> excellent excellent well I hope you've enjoyed uh, my rampant doodling and uh, Liv's rambling I hope uh, all of you kept count of how many times she said like and um we're gonna move on to worship now is that correct just a minute, Max. Alrighty. Well, <laughs> they're jumping ahead of us here. So, yes, I checked out all the YouTube comments. There were lots of thumbs up. Olivia said it about a thousand times, but uh, can we give Max and Olivia um, a massive round of applause? Let's hear it. Um, thank you for masterpiece Max's masterpieces. Well, guys, uh, last week we had our meme challenge and um, you guys uh, took the meme and uh, put a caption to it and it was great over this week uh, we got lots of responses of your creativity uh, with words and uh, the captions were awesome and uh, we picked our top 
three that we picked the best. Um, I'm not sure who picked the best, but we did pick three uh, that we liked. And tonight we want you guys uh, to vote on which one uh, you liked the best. All right. And we're going to have a winner out of these three. And so we're going to uh, take a look at our top three. So when you vote, you're going to vote one, two or three. So here is number one, uh, me waking up to see my dog. I don't have a dog. I don't have a dog. I like that one. That's pretty good. All right. Number two is uh, when we get hit by a ball in PE and try uh, to look tough. Look at Ben looking tough. And then when we throw the ball at someone else. Uh, yep. Uh, that's our face. when <laughs> We throw the ball at someone else. So that's number two. All right. Number three. Top three. Here we go. Coming to youth uh, in a youth shirt, uh, coming to youth <laughs> in a random black shirt, and uh, coming to youth in a designer shirt. Uh, I'm just going to point out that I'm wearing my youth designer shirt from Youth Camp. How cool is that? Anyway, uh, so they are this week's top three uh, memes. Make sure you vote uh, in the comment space, and uh, we will tally those up. And uh, when we come back from worship, we will see uh, which one you guys uh, voted the best. Now, uh, we've got this week's uh, meme challenge and uh, take a look at uh, this meme. We want you uh, to, oh look, it's our wonderful Hannah. And we want you to uh, put a caption. Uh, here are a couple examples. Don't steal them. All right, make up your own. Uh, but here are a couple of our examples. All national answers anthems are technically country songs, or country music. Yeah, it's true. Let's be honest. All right. Or this one. I really like this one. Uh, city campus could be any campus because they're all in cities. Whoa. Shout out to all of our campuses. So make sure that you go onto your campus's uh, social media page, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, find that meme, uh, make your own caption, send it back to us and maybe next week uh, it will be your meme that we are voting on. Alrighty, so make sure you vote in the comments below. Alrighty guys, now we are about to head into uh, a time of worship. It's so awesome even uh, being so separate that we can still worship together. So uh, why don't you uh, stand to your feet wherever you are. I know you might feel weird but hey, let's just uh, step into this space of worship tonight. Alright, I'm going to hand it over to uh, our incredible worship band right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Youth Live. It's so great to have you here. We're just going to start off with a bit of worship, so why don't you join us as we sing? worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things Beautiful through every storm Faithful forevermore, you have done great things, and I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things, God. You do great things, oh hero of heaven. You conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. 
Unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Oh, you do great things, hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God. Unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things. You conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken to life. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Oh God, you do great
child of God. Yes, I am a child of God. Oh, I am a child of God. I'm no Jesus Christ 
What a powerful name it is And nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Father, I thank you that you are Lord over all. I thank you that we can declare that you have no rival and you have no equal. God, you are so good. You are so good. With you, we can face anything, Lord. With you, we have everything. So I thank you that you've done great things, that you are doing great things, and that you will continue to do great things, Lord, for all our days. And thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How, uh, how awesome is it to be able to worship together whilst being so separate and, and sing those words, you know, our God is a good God and he, he is with us in everything that we are going through right now. Well, guys, uh, we tallied up all of your comments and um, all the votes for all of our different memes. And uh, the winner of our, our meme caption for this week was meme number one. Woo! So good. Um, that was great. Don't forget, go on to all your youth socials, get this week's meme, caption it. Uh, we can't wait to do this all again next week. Now, guys, we have been running a little bit late tonight due to some t technical difficulties but that's fine just a reminder your zoom life groups are still gonna happen all right they're not happening right now but they will happen uh, after we finish tonight so stay here for the message and then afterwards we will head into those zoom life groups well guys it is my absolute honor and privilege to introduce the amazing the incredible uh, miss Hannah white from our city campus to uh, bring tonight's message so why don't you give her a massive cheer as she comes to share tonight? Woo! Hello, everybody. It is so good to see you. Thank you for sticking around. I can't wait to connect with you guys after Life Group, after I've preached. But tonight, we are going to be talking about how contentment is so much better than envy. Now, contentment is knowing that no matter what else is happening in our lives, that everything is going to be all right. It's a knowledge, not necessarily an emotion. Whereas envy is a feeling disc of discontent or resentful longing provoked by somebody else's possessions, qualities or luck. Who knows that there is so many things in this life we can be envious of, of other people's lifestyles, their relationships, their clothes, their style, how funny they are how easy they are to talk to, their skills like academics, music, arts, sports. Maybe they can do English well. Maybe they can do it all well. But I don't know whether you've ever heard somebody in the church say that contentment is only found in Jesus. And who knows that is easier said than done. Like, what? That's it? And... I I don't think I would be content if the new Air Jordans came out and I was like, I'm not content until they are on my feet. Or maybe you've seen all your friends do the Bible characters Instagram filter and they get Jesus for the first time and it just, I'm not satisfied until I got to the end and that took me forever. Or when you train so hard to be in the top of the team and you just don't quite reach there. Or you study so hard for the marks that you wanted, but you just missed the mark. Or when you're so looking forward to formal and it's cancelled. Or right now, you might not be content because you miss your friends. How can Jesus be the answer to contentment? We look to others and see everything going well for them. We see them get the marks they wanted. We see everyone liking them. And it's so hard. Or even in the Christian world, I got to say, I'm envious of those who love reading the Bible and can understand everything it says. But in all seriousness, contentment is hard to attain. It's hard to keep. It's even hard to get in the first place. 
We live in a world where stuff makes people envious of others. Stuff, circumstances, things of this world, it piles up and we forget the big picture things. We focus on the stuff we don't have rather than the stuff we do have, like a bed to sleep on, like the opportunity to get an education, our friends and family, even the privilege of knowing God and having a relationship with Him. We forget to see the blessings we already have in our lives. So how do we t- not take those things for granted? How do we find contentment with the incredible blessings we do have? How is Jesus the answer to finding contentment? The answer is Jesus because he shows us in the way he lives how to live a life of contentment. He shows us what we are forgetting. He shows us the blessings we have in our lives. He shows us our value in him and how envy is not needed. And that's why Jesus is the answer. And tonight, I want to look a bit at Jesus' life and see how contentment looks in the good, bad, and ugly because I don't know whether you picked up from the definition or not, but it never says anything about contentment only happening during the good times. But it says that it happens and you are knowing contentment is found when you know that everything is going to be okay. When Jesus grew up, It wasn't all easy, but he knew his purpose. He was challenged by authorities constantly, but he knew his purpose was to love and care for people with grace and joy. He was tempted just like we all are, but he used God's word to help him and remember what is true. He even carried his own cross, but he knew good would come out of the trials. Jesus found contentment in knowing his purpose, trusting God through the good, bad and ugly and putting his value in his father, in our father. 1 Timothy 6, 6 to 12 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap into many foolish and harmful desires that plague people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, men and women of God, flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life in which you are called when you made good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So how do we find contentment? We look to Jesus. We see his example, trust him with our lives, our futures, our passions, our desires. Envy will only eat you up inside if you're looking at what others have instead of focusing on what you do have and you'll end up feeling hard, angry and sad. I want to tell you a story tonight. My mum was a hospitality teacher, so I grew up in the hospitality kitchens at school. I remember doing functions from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. and you were on your feet all day. So when I started hospitality studies in grade 11 and 12, I was like, I am going to smash this. But then this girl called Kimberly Hop joined the class. She was gorgeous, funny, pretty smart, and I knew she'd done hospitality in previous years as well. But I found myself in that class with the teacher asking me to teach the other students what to do. I would come early, stay late, say to Kim, stop talking and come help me with this. And I would run functions from start to finish. But it would come to our assignments. And honestly, I just can't English. I can't. Uh, Kim, with her incredible brains and abilities, would whip up an assignment the night before and presto, bingo, bango, A+, plus, while two weeks of assignment writing for me and a solid B. Now, I'm not complaining, but it was frustrating. I was so envious of her ability to do that. I don't know whether you've got anybody in your life who can whip up assignments like that and get perfect marks, but it's annoying. I was envious of her abilities to English well, but you know what? She's a teacher now and she smashed teaching at university and I became an event coordinator and cater at weddings and parties and realized that God gave us both gifts and we get to use them in different ways. 
So in telling you that story, I want to challenge you tonight to recognize all that causes you to feel envy and weighs heavily on you. What do you need to let go tonight? What do you need to acknowledge as something and change something you envy and change your mindset to it being a circumstance where you thank God for what he has given you and know that everything will, will be all right. When, Jesus, when we look at Jesus's life, we see that, we, that he dealt with a lot of stuff, but he chose to press into God and what he said about him and what God was calling him to do. God wants to know you and work through you. He died and rose again to be close to you and spend eternity with you. The other danger in finding contentment in earthy, earthly things like making lots of money, porn, alcohol, cheap thrills as Sia calls it, is things like this may make you feel good for a short period of time, but they will leave you ultimately feeling empty and dissatisfied. Just like the end of the verse in Timothy says, we need to be men and women of God who flee envy and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you said yes to Jesus. Let's find contentment in Jesus tonight. Just like the end of that verse says, let's strive to be happy in the now and excited for what God has for us next. So I have a challenge for you this week. I want you to get out a pen and paper and I want you to write a list of all the things that you get envious over. And then just next to it, I want you to make a list twice as long of all the things, things that you are thankful for, all the stuff that God has given you. And it has to be twice as long. Because then we will see and we will recognize what God has given us. And hopefully that will instill in us a sense of him looking out for us and a sense of true contentment. Let's pray tonight. Lord Jesus, we need your help with this. We know that you are such a good God and you love us so much. And I pray that as we do life, we would see all that you are doing for us. We would acknowledge that you are a good God and you provide for us. And so help us be content in our lives. Help us put our faith and trust in you so that we are not looking for what we don't have, but are thankful for what we do have. Help us, help us write those lists this week. And I pray that we have an awesome time in life group tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hannah, don't go too far, just like a oh. metre and a half away from me. <laughs> uh, thanks for that great message. What a great a reminder for us during this time. Like it's such a good message. And uh, I can't wait for you guys to have conversations in your life group tonight um, about what Hannah uh, has uh, shared with us. Now, guys, don't forget, uh, we want to stay connected during this time. So get on those socials. They are a great way for us to connect throughout the whole week, not just to tonight um, but throughout the whole week remember our meme challenges and uh, life groups are gonna start yep. uh, in a few minutes um so make sure that you uh, jump into those. But uh, before we go, uh, Hannah's just got a couple of questions that are going to help prompt you uh, in your life group time. So Hannah, what are our questions this week? So they're good questions. What are you envious of? What are you thankful for? And how can we make sure we trust God in the good times and the bad times? Awesome. Great questions. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us on YouTube tonight uh, and uh, for being bearing with us through all of our technical <laughs> difficulties, but it was so great to share um, a Friday night with you. Uh, we hope you have a great week, have an awesome time uh, in your life groups, and uh, we will see you here again next week. All right, bye! bye. bye.